agenda. Uh, there are some members of the public in, so just for the benefit of those members of the public, uh, toilets just down the corridor at the top of the stairs where you came in. And uh, if the fire alarm sounds, <coughs> it won't be a drill. Uh, so follow me out of the building. Uh, it'll either be through the door at the back there or the way we came in. Um, two applications this evening. Have we got any apologies? I'll go to apologies first of all. No, I think we're all here looking around the room. I've had... Am I? Yeah. I don't have any apologies for them, so thank you. Bear with me while this laptop opens. Here we go. Apologies, my laptop's now up to speed. Right, so we've done apologies. Minutes of the previous meeting. Um, are we happy that the minutes of the previous meeting are a true record? Councillor Goodall, you moving those minutes? Councillor Brindley's hand went up. Seconding. All in favour? I'll sign a copy of those minutes if you've got a copy available, Tracy. Thanks. Um, no matters arising from those minutes, I take it? No. Are there any declarations of interest for this evening in relation to the two applications on the agenda? No. Okay. Uh, we will move into the applications. Then we've got two to hear tonight. The first one is uh, 16 Wigginton Road, application number 0017-2021. And the second one is the Central Cooperative Supermarket site at Brent in Wilnicott, which is application number 0069-2020. Uh, we'll start with the Wigginton Road application. Uh, Sally, would you like to present? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, if we can start with the first slide, please. I'll just run through the slides first, actually. That might be the easiest way. So uh, this is the site which is um, close to the junction with Wigginton Road and Ashby Road. Um, you can see the, the site area is in red and the, uh, the blue area is number 16 Wigginton Road, which is in the, the same ownership of the applicant. Um, you can see on the, site, on the site plan just to the south is the labelled chapel, which is the Spittle Chapel, which I'll... I'll um, give you some more information on in a, in a little while. Um, the access to the site is onto Ashby Road at the, f at the uh, western side. So if you go to the next slide please, that just gives you an idea on the, the aerial photo. We can perhaps come back to that and, and zoom in a little bit if necessary. And you can see the site is, is the, um, the garden area, the open space in the, the middle of the site being pointed out now. And the next slide is, this is the proposal, which is um, a two-storey dwelling. That's the footprint of the dwelling, so a sort of L-shape, uh, sorry, T-shape -sh rather. Um, so it's sitting between or next to number 23 Ashby Road, and I think it's number 9 Ashby Road, at the, the south of the picture. Um, and then the next slide, please. That shows the elevation, so you've got the... Um, the front and rear elevations and then the, the two side elevations, one facing facing number 9 Ashby Road and the other one facing uh, 23 Ashby Road, just at the, the bottom of the, the screen, which you can't quite see, I'm afraid. Um, then, just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a street scene elevation provided by the, the architect. So it just shows how, it, how the site um, falls down towards the junction with Ashby Road and Wig Wigginton Road, so it's slightly higher at the, uh, at the number 23. 
Um, if we go back to, perhaps go back to the first of the slides, that might be the best one, but yes, that one. I'll just um, introduce some, some of the report. Obviously, it's a fairly lengthy report you have in front of you. Um, the application was called in by Councillor uh, Pritchard. Is that right? Yeah. Council Pritchard, sorry. Um, so the format of the report is slightly different to what you normally see on the committee reports. This is this is the format of a delegated report because that's how we'd we'd uh, prepared it. Um, we had <coughs> we consulted on the application. It was actually received back in January last year, um, and there were there were various um, delays on it, uh, request requiring a heritage statement that took some time and that there were some delays, some further delays. But we consulted highway, uh, sorry, Staffs County Council Highways, Staffs County Council Archaeology, um, Historic England, the Conservation Officer, Seven Trent Water Authority, the Joint Waste Services, and, and of those, no, um, no objections were actually received from those consultees. We also notify neighbours, as we do, um, and we've got six objections. Um, sorry, six objections, including including neighbours, and also from the the Tamathan District Civic Society, and the Reverend and members of the congregation of the adjacent chapel. Um, the report before you has a long list of the um, the objections that we received with, with a number of headings. So I'm not going to read all of those out, but, but essentially the principal objections are, are regarding loss of light, um, the, the dwelling being overbearing, loss of privacy, archaeology issues and the impact on traffic and highways, um, also the visual amenity, um, design, um, and the, the impact on, on heritage. Um, the report runs through all of those, um, and if we perhaps just go to the elevations, we consider that it, that it is a good quality design, fits well with the early 20th century domestic revival style as seen on, on other properties in, in Ashby Road, this part of Ashby Road, um, and acceptable in principle being in a location that's uh, relatively close to the town centre, um, a, a good sustainable location. So in, in in that respect, it, it complies with policy EN5. Um, regarding the neighbour amenity, um, it actually meets all the standards for space around the dwellings. Perhaps go to the site plan. Yeah, that one. Sorry, the site plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in terms of spaces, to the the garden area. Um, the number of car parking spaces, distances to other dwellings. It meets with all of those standards that we have um, in our policies, including the, the SPD, the S Supplementary Planning Guidance document, which uh, refers to specifically to, to loss of light or light angles. If we go back to the site plan, so the location plan, um, the impact on the heritage asset as you see, the chapel is there. The chapel, as it as is described in the report, it's a, it's a Grade Two star listed building, very small church. Um, it's the Chapel of St James. Um, we have therefore consulted with the conservation officer, the, ca the council's conf conservation officer, um, and his his comments are included in the report. But essentially, his conclusion is that the, there is. There is no harm to the special significance of this this building. Um, he says that there's little remaining of the actual setting of the, the original setting of the building, um, and therefore that this proposal complies with the policy in the local plan EN6, and also with the the um, national policies of the MPPF that refer to uh, to heritage sites. In terms of archaeology, um, again, we've consul consulted with the county and uh, conditions are needed for the proposal to comply with this with policy EN6. Um, so we've, cons we've included those conditions within the report. Um, in terms of trees and biodiversity, that's also mentioned in the, the report. 
there are um, a number of, a number of trees around the site if we perhaps look on the aerial photo the next one you can see you can see there's a, um, a good deal of cre tree tree coverage between along the boundaries of the site and between um, the, s the site with uh, number 23 Ashby Road um, these these trees and hedges will be afforded some protection and we've also included uh, various conditions regarding um, retention and protection of the planting and also new planting where it's required in that, that respect it complies with policy EN4 of the local plan um, and just to conclude the the residential development in this location is is really entirely Im appropriate, um, being a sustainable a sustainable development in in a sustainable location and in keeping in design and, and scale with the surrounding development types. Um, there there are no uh, outstanding objections from statutory consultees, and whilst We've considered the objectors' comments. None of their concerns are considered to be justification for refusal. Um, so uh, the application is recommended for approval with a number of conditions, seven conditions, I think it is, included in the report. But just, just to confirm as well, the, the conditions are actually mentioned twice in the report. There's, uh, there's the list within the within the box, effectively, in the delegated report, and then they've also been repeated, just for, for clarification, repeated on page 19 and 20, so that it's, that it's exactly the same conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sally. Um, we do have one speaker uh, on this application, I believe, in the room. Uh, Mrs Haynes? Yeah. Beverly Haynes? Yeah. Okay. If you could come forward, please. Okay, you'll have right. you'll have three minutes to speak. Yeah. Um, and the three minutes uh, will start from the m time you start start speaking. So um, compose yourself. Yeah. Make sure you you're comfortable before you start speaking, um, and then it'll be a case of where you go. Um, <laughs> so your three minutes uh, start when you're ready. All right. Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to everybody. And it's a very personal thing from our perspective. Um, I wanted to first of all say that in the um, praise of our objections and comments, um, there were a couple of things that I just wanted to clarify. Um, first of all was that the six windows on the side of our property that face this development um, face now or will face a, a very large blank 12 metre long brick wall. Um, and that whilst they are mentioned as being secondary windows, um, secondary windows are actually afforded protection um, when they are within 90 degrees of due south because they become primary windows for winter sunlight. And whilst we very much appreciate that there was an amended plan put in which has hit the roof and sunk it a little and moved it 60 centimetres further away, when we've used the sunlight app that you can use on your telephone, and put in our coordinates and put in various dates during the year, the, our house will lose 97% um, winter sun into those main living spaces because of those side windows having lost it to this building. Um, we double check that, it means about between five and eight minutes will be gained by having had it hipped and moved to the position that it's in. But all of the rest of our winter sun will be lost. Um, we've looked at that quite a lot. We've looked at um, the recommendations for that consideration when any building is done. Um, and there seems to be more protection for extensions than there are for new builds, which is <laughs> amazing. Um, so we get less protection perhaps from that. But there's no BRE being carried out to actually see the impact on our quality of life, our health and well-being from this build being built. It will affect the dominant airflow that we currently enjoy, so our cross-ventilation within our property in the summer will be affected. Um, the uh, amenity aspect of 
the wood burner that is being installed, the gas boiler that is being installed, and uh, as a sideline, the waste bins that are right beside us as well. But those things are all going to actually have a detrimental effect on the way we can ventilate our house because the dominant breeze and the wind direction comes and will be now blocked by that building. Um, it really will have a, a quite bad impact on our day-to-day -day life and in the winter we'll have to have power, um, far greater power usage actually to illuminate our dining room snug which will be plunged into gloom. It will get no winter sun. It does have a north facing window but when you have a north facing window it becomes the secondary window because basically it isn't within the 90 degrees of the south so it can be saying, discounted. Sorry you've got 30 seconds. That's fine. Um, the other thing is we love Spittle Chapel. This is the last little bit of remaining green that shows how it was once sitting in a field and I really very strongly feel that that little bit of green ought to stay. Thank you very much. Thank you Mrs Haynes. Okay, there are no other speakers um, at this point, so we move on to um, our questions. At this point, it is questions uh, on points of clarification. We're not into debate um, yet, so we'll save the debate for the uh, for the later part of the meeting. Um, so look good all, first of all, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to confirm what the buildings are to the south of the chapel, please, on the on the map. Are they? Residential properties. I believe so. We'll just have a look at the map. I could answer that. Oh. <laughs> sort of yep. along the Ashby Road. They're yep. residential. Yep, they're they all are residential. They're all residential. And how yep. old old are they? Uh, the various ages, actually. Um, probably nineteen thirties, most I think. Okay. That's that's fine. Thank you. Councillor Jay. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask for clarification from um, the officers about the the point that the sorry was it Mrs Hayes or Mrs Haynes Mrs. Haynes, Haynes uh, mentioned about the the protection of, of se secondary light and how it becomes primary light the, the point was made there I mean that was a really good point if if that is the case so could you clarify that please um, yes chair this might be easier if we could zoom in on to that um, Tracy and just see if we can see. A little bit closer on the, the windows that are affected. Um, we do have guidelines in our, our SPD um, which, which look at the impact on windows. Um, yeah, if you can, we can see at the, at the bottom of the picture where Trace is pointing now, there are, there are side windows which are to a dining room, I believe. A sitting room. In, ter in terms of the, the guidelines, we look at uh, 45 degree lines from the front wi front facing windows and rear facing windows. So we would class these the side windows as secondary windows, and therefore we have no particular guidelines in in respect of, um, of impact on those. Uh, there is obviously at the moment there is a, a substantial hedge along that boundary, um, and the dwelling would be. The dwelling would be yeah nine meters from that from that side boundary, which, in terms of our, uh, of the general guidelines, we find that to be acceptable. It's it's um, further away than, than a number of the properties um, that already exist on that street, uh, and again with with general residential layout, so would be considerably closer than that. Thank you, Sally. Okay, so Jay, has that answered the question? Okay, have we got any more questions? Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, on the highways issue, on the frontage to Ashby Road, um, I can see no mention of the fact that um, access or the driveway to this property would be directly opposite, or almost opposite, the Quems School, and, the st and directly opposite the Standon Residential Home. There's no mention of this at all in the report. Um, could you explain that? Uh, yes, Chair. There, uh, there is a section. 
regarding iron waste, just bear me a second. Yeah, there's a section on, on page 14 on highway safety. Um, we have consulted County Highways on this application um, and they have noted in their comments, they've noted the existence of the school opposite, they've noted the um, double yellow lines around the area, they've, they've noted the, the traffic, um, traffic impact on that stretch of road. Um, they've also noted, I think, that there were, there's been no uh, personal injury accidents in the last five years and therefore they've they've recommended approval of the application that they need to so I'm just looking for the, the conditions um, they need to they need to show that there's been that, that there would be a severe impact a severe highway impact um, for to justify any refusal and in this case they they consider that um, one dwelling the amount of traffic for one dwelling would be acceptable so we're, we're guided by the Highways Authority on this. Thank you, Sally. Councillor Harper, does that uh, cover that particular point? Uh, thank you. Uh, no, it doesn't actually, Chair. <laughs> 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 Have you got another question? The, um, the fact that there is no mention of this being the school where hundreds of children are coming in and out daily, um, the actual sentence says, no concerns were expressed by County Highways with regards to highway safety. I find that astonishing um, that there's no mention of it, and I. I Councillor was, Harper, I we're, in da we're in danger of being in debate. Have you got a question? I would suggest that the the highways have made a mistake. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, I'll, I'll if I may, I'll lead into another question then, which is is a similar topic, and it may lead to a second question from me. Have highways visited? this site yes chair they have it m might help if i read out what the the highways report says it, it is it it's um, attached to yeah the thank you as part of the application there's that there's a link th through the agenda so they say um there are no objections on the highway grounds to the proposed development subject to the following conditions being included a site visit was carried out on the 26th of the first 2020 as I said, originally this application was uh, first came in, in in January, so they they tend to, to do their visits sort of straight away. Um, personal injury collisions. Current records show there were no personal injury collisions on Ashby Road within 50 metres either side of the property accesses for the previous five years. Um, background: Ashby Road is a b is a B classified 30 mile an hour. 30 mile per hour speed road which benefits from street lighting. It lies approximately one mile nor north of Tamworth Town Centre, less than two miles north of A5. The entrance to Landau Forte Academy, Quems, is approximately 45 yards northeast of the proposal and has associated school keep clear zigzag lines extending opposite the front of the property. There are also no waiting at any time restrictions, brackets double yellow lines, fronting the property. Pedestrian access to Spittle Chapel of St James runs northwest of the property boundary. And the, the comments on the information submitted, the applications for the erection of a four bedroom detached bungalow in the rear garden of number 16 Withington Road with access onto Ashby Road. Following from my previous comments, the applicant has submitted a revised parking plan. It is noted that the internal integral garage sorry is under the recommended internal dimensions for a double garage however the driveway has sufficient space to accommodate three vehicles recommendations no objections on highway grounds to the proposed development subject to the following conditions and there's a condition says the development hereby permitted shall not be brought into use until the access and parking areas have been provided in a bound and porous material in accordance with the approved drawing number nine 649.02 revision C site layout plans and elevations and shall thereafter be retained for the lifetime of the development. Thank you, Sally. I know you said it, but my memory's rubbish. What date did they say they'd gone out? Uh, this was the 26th of January 2021, but there have been revisions since then, yeah. so it's quite possible that the highways officer has been since then. Do you know what time of day they went out? Can't, I can't tell you from from uh, what's written on here now. Okay. 
Are there any further questions? Councillor Norkey. Just going on from there then, Chair. If this was to be approved, the deliveries for this uh, proposed building will be de delivered off the Ashby Road, I am presuming? I'm also presuming that. Sally, do we know the answer to that? Uh, yeah, I presume there would be, Chair. Thank you. So that is going to cause some obstruction, I mean, especially in the time of the children going to school, because they'll start work no later than 8 in the morning, and lots of bodies will be on the move then. Thank you, Councillor Norkey. Any further questions at this stage? Councillor Jay. Jog my memory here, but when we were in lockdown in January, as a country, all schools off? I can't remember, if I'm honest. So they came to assess the traffic and schools when everyone was at let's, home? Let's move on to that in, d in debate, shall we? But yeah, you're probably right. Any more for any more questions? No. In that case, we'll move to debate. Would anyone like to start? Councillor Jay. Thank you. Um, I know we we get told to review things based on the whether they tick all the planning boxes, um, but I do think when we've 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 got a neighbour and a speaker who's uh, expressed their views, we should we should give that more weight. Whether the planning rules allow for that to have more weight, I, I don't really care. I think we should because you know if it's going to affect somebody, um, as the lady had mentioned. Um, and affect the light on the house and the ventilation, all those things, we should take that into into account and give that uh, a certain level of weight in, in my view. Um, and, you know, whether it ticks the boxes uh, against the rules or not, the the statement from the speaker for me is enough to, to say no to it would be my view. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jay. Councillor Gretrix. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've read this report, obviously. Um, and there never seems to be any objections from all the statutory bodies, ever. But there are from residents, and there's a lot of um, concerns here. A house is the most expensive thing anybody will buy. And frankly, I wouldn't want light and everything else that the lady talked about blocked off from my house. Um, I don't think this is, is a well-advised building. Thank you, Councillor Gratrix. On the point that the house is the most expensive thing, I'll introduce you to my daughter one day. Um, are there any, does anybody else want to contribute? Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Ah, right. I read this report very, very thoroughly, and quite frankly, after finishing on page whatever it was, I was flabbergasted, flabbergasted that the that this that this scheme was was entertained, let alone given. A recommendation uh, for approval. Um, if we start at from, if we go through the report in, uh, from the conservation officer, in my view, the development of the site to the north for a dwelling would not alter the setting of the chapel in any notable way, and certainly not be harmful to its special significance as a listed building. I beg to differ. I beg to differ on the strongest terms. Um, we'll come to that shortly, but um, the residents of these, they've put together some really, really poignant, for light, um, inappropriate, insensitive, overlooking, um, overbearing, overshadowing, lock loss of privacy. All of these things are extremely pertinent. And if I was one of the residents, I, I would be hitting the roof that this totally inappropriate um, application was even being considered. Um, if we can look at the site, I mean, I don't know how many people uh, know the history of the, of the site. Um, I do. Uh, I know it very well. I've written about this site many, many times. I've researched it and I know an awful lot about the Spittle Chapel. 
and what I'd like to do is to just explain to you and, and actually put right something that the officer has, has, has got wrong. Um, the Spittal Chapel was used as a wayside, a wayside house of prayer and refreshment from at least 1285. 1285! We're going back to medieval days. We're going back to the days of Robin Hood when this building stood there at the north of Tamworth on its own. There was no Ashby Road, just a track. There was no Wigginton Road, just a track. Comerford Road was just a, a walking track. It was stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, today, uh, we're told that the local policy, that the proposals effect designated to this, uh, the, that um, the proposal should accept the significance of its setting, which must be protected, conserved, and, where possible, enhanced. How, in God's name, planting a four-bedroom detached building with two garages and, and a car park for three cars is going to enhance what is probably Tamworth's oldest building, leaving the castle aside. This is one. This is our oldest building. It should be absolutely treasured, and not be surrounded by masonry, modern buildings. If I can tell you briefly on the uh, on the site how the buildings happened to be there and how the chapel was saved in the late Victorian area, most. Councillor Harper, sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt because any any points of debate have got to be relevant to the application and these points that you're making now, although interesting, are relevant to the original, to the older buildings. So we need to relate it directly to this application, if you can, please. What I am saying is very, very relevant, Chair. Um, these properties were built by the whole of the properties between the Ashby Road and the Wigginton Road were built on this vacant piece of farmland by Dr. Joy in uh, the late Victorian era. He acquired the piece of land and erected all of these properties. His, his intention was to demolish the Spittal Chapel, which was in a parlous state of, uh, of repair. He was stopped from doing so by two great Tamworthians, H.C. Mitchell, who was the local stonemason, and curator of the castle and of Tamworth Church, and the Reverend McGregor, the famous Reverend McGregor. Sorry, Councillor Harper, this is turning into. I know it's important, but we need to concentrate on this application and not the not the history of the whole site. I'm Sorry. trying, Chair. Yeah, I'm trying to put some hot, put some flesh on some missing points in here because the importance of this building cannot be understated. Understood, but you need to do it. It is do it directly it is com <laughs> the problem I've got is that comments have been submitted expressing concern with regard to the impacts of the setting of the chapel however the conservation officer takes the view that the development of the site for a dwelling would not alter its setting the setting of the chapel in any notable way and not be harmful. That is the problem I've got. Understood, yeah. This property, if it was built, it's a huge property. It's probably bigger than the original house in the garden of which it is going to stand. There are places for four bedroom detached houses. This is not it. The ground on which it is standing, the Spittal Chapel was used, the, the name Spittal, the ward is named after this particular chapel the reason it was given its name was because it was a hospital at the time of the plague this is where the people with from Tamworth who contracted the plague this is where they were taken and where do you think they would have been buried when they died they would have been buried on the north side of the chapel as indeed they were on the north side of Tamworth church that is directly underneath this property so there are very probably medieval bur burials under there has this been properly examined? Have archaeologists gone there? That's certainly going to have to happen if this is going to, if anything is going to happen here, because this is such a sensitive site. Um, I 
I think I think but, we I think we take your point there, Councillor Harper. Okay, I, yeah. I think I think you put it very concisely now, so that's <laughs> that's appreciated. Thank you. Um, have you got anything that you want to add to the site itself? Well, the site itself is totally inappropriate. It's a garden grab. This is a garden grab application driven by someone who wants to make a few pennies. You can't blame anyone for making, wanting to make a few pennies, but the people who will pay the price are the local residents and the people of Tamworth who will have one of their most prized and precious historical monuments, one of its oldest, ruined. Because it will, when you're, when you're looking at any historic building, the most important thing is the scale and the setting in which it is located. This application would ruin the scale and the setting of this historic property, and the cost would be paid by future generations who have to suffer this building. So um, I think this is a, 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 an incorrect report, and I suggest that this application should be turned down forthwith on the grounds that it would seriously damage the scale and setting of one of Tamworth's most historic and important sites. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Um, at this stage, I'm going to add my thoughts in, and then I'll go to Councillor Goodall. Um, I, I've got an, a real issue at the minute with the, the traffic report, um, because I, I don't know if we were in lockdown in, in January or not, I can't remember, but that report was done on a Tuesday, probably quite quiet. Yes, it's a B road, yes, it's a 30 mile an hour limit. The reality is, and it's a harsh reality, um, is that uh, people drive far faster than 30 miles an hour along that road. It's almost opposite the entrance to Standon House Rest Home, which has vehicles moving in and out of the grounds all day, every day, including delivery vehicles. Um, it's got the school. The school is not 45 yards away. The school gates might be 45 yards away, but the entrance to the school um, turnaround point for pick up and drop off is more like about 10 yards away um, that junction is very very busy um, at peak times of the day um, whether the school's in or not the school's also used in the evenings and the school is used at weekends and is a very busy site there's traffic going in and out of that school site all day every day um, and I have a real issue with the traffic report that was done on a Tuesday in January and as Councillor Jay pointed out we were probably in some sort of lockdown restrictions at that point so the, the traffic volumes wouldn't have been normal anyway um, so I've got real concerns on that um, I've also got concerns over the chapel um, and the, the, the fact that other houses have been built around the chapel over the years for me shouldn't justify building something else wedging something else in that one piece of ground that is 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 left remaining um <clears throat> but I, I do have some real concerns over the over the traffic report so that i'll just leave my thoughts there for now councillor goodall i think you indicated thank you chair and uh, th thanks for councillor harper for his, his his history with regard to the site it was actually quite interesting so thank you for that um and um, yeah we have already learnt that there are houses built in the direct vicinity of the of the chapel um, personally uh, I'd take on board the residents and, and, and neighbours views on it but I personally don't see a material reason to refuse based on the evidence presented before us and we do have to judge the application on that evidence um, so personally I would be in, in favour but I'm happy to listen to other committee members views at this moment thank you Councillor Pritchard I'd just like to point out when I introduced Councillor Pritchard that it was Councillor Rob Pritchard that called this in and Councillor Stephen Pritchard is now going to speak thank you Mr Chair a um, lot, lot being said about traffic um, if this property has three parking spaces 
does that automatically assume that all day long there are going to be three additional vehicles driving in and out of that property or will it be like most other commuter properties where at seven o'clock in the morning the people leave the homes and return at five o'clock or six o'clock in the evening uh, adding no additional risk to the entrance at the school and I know it's a very very pertinent point that there are children but there are children that will pass the houses either side of that property if you look at the the photo plan there are at least three vehicles in the property next door by the looks of it so are we saying that those three vehicles shouldn't be there as well we can't have any 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 properties built with provision for vehicles only pedestrians can buy a property uh, if there's one built there so I'm th so I'm thinking thank you thanks councillor Pritchard Are there any other points of debate at the moment councillor Greatrix thank you chair um, I know there's a recommendation to pass this um, and as councillor um, Goodall said um, we should but what's the point of having a, commi a committee we are here to make a decision ourselves on what we hear and we've read in the committee but we've also heard very very eloquently from councillor Harper uh, the history of the church and the site which I think is not being taken seriously enough frankly so I think it's perfectly okay if members do turn this down because we are here to make that judgment not just based on the report but what on every member of this committee perceives as well thank you thank you councillor Greystricks I, I just point out at this stage that um, uh, obviously there is a recommendation f to, to approve the application <coughs> if members are minded to refuse it in refusing it whoever is well we as a committee would have to have a very good solid grounds for refusing um, I'm not saying that we can't I'm just making clear now that we've got to have very good reasons for refusing it if that's the way we're going to go and um, that refusal would have to stand up against against planning policy and, and law party is that fair yeah, that's, that's Chair, you know clearly um the decision maker is the planning committee uh, but if members are minded to refuse the application uh, then it has to be refused um, on sound planning grounds thank you party i just wanted to make that clear so it's in the back of everybody's minds because you know it is at the committee's it's at the committee's um, uh, behest what we do with it but we've just got to be 100 percent clear if we're going to go down that route councillor jay you've got your hand up yeah, so I, I get that's the that's the you know the recommendation that there's got to be a, a planning reason etc. But planning reports, planning rules don't take into account um, local knowledge. We've heard this evening uh, local knowledge from the residents and how it's going to impact them. So I, you know, if we're just to sit here and say yes and agree with what's in a report, then I'd, I'd what's the point of being here, right? We need to bring in that local knowledge. That's the whole point of having locally elected representatives to bring in the local knowledge. If we can't bring that in here. We may as well just go home and have everything accepted via the internet and just do nothing. Right, the local knowledge is what we bring, so we should absolutely, uh, in my opinion, whether it's against the rules or not, that's what we're here for. So we're elected to bring that here, and that's, that's what I think we should do. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Does anybody else want to add, Councillor Harper? I would just like to back the points put forward there by Councillor Jay and say exactly that. The residents living there have stood up to be counted and they've put their m mouths where they they should be and they've said what they think. We should do the same. We should not be cowed by planning um, procedures. If we think that something is right, we should do what is right. And in this particular case, I can see no good reason for allowing this application to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Councillor Maycock. I can see um, both points of view are. Uh, one, we have to 
make our decisions in accordance with planning rules and laws. Um, but then I understand Councillor Harper's point of view about the site. He's got in-depth knowledge of the site, having researched it. And I'm just looking at point number five. If that there is meant to be uh, archaeological works investigated on the site as part of the recommendations, if something is found on the site after this investigation, is there a clause to say that the site would then not go ahead? I know we're in debate now, not questions, but I, I don't know what the answer to that is, actually. I think we need some clarification on that, Pardee. Uh, no, Chair. Uh, basically, um, there, there, there wouldn't be... The only thing I could suggest is that um, in terms of any archaeological investigation, if anything is actually found from, from a planning perspective, just purely from a planning perspective, you know, once you've actually approved it, um, you know, the development can actually go ahead. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a question of what the scheme reveals, because it, it's the way that the condition is actually worded. Um, you know, prior to the commencement of the development hereby permitted, a written scheme for archaeological investigation shall be submitted for the written approval of the planning authority. So, when that scheme comes to the planning authority, you know, if there are issues of concern, um, you know, then um, it may very well be that the planning officer will not actually approve that particular condition. And because it's a pre-commencement condition, uh, the only control that you've actually got is, you know, via that condition. If it's not approved, then they can't actually commence. So there is an element of power there, you know, so far as the way the condition five is worded. Um, d does that help? It, it does. Councillor Maycock, is that...? So we have to actually... To so say we OK the plan, there's work carried out on the grounds and, for example, burials are found. Is that still, is the building still going to carry on? Well, it, it's a very difficult one because basically it's a question of what is actually found because it could be that if there is something of great significance when the planning officer actually receives that written scheme, you know, it could be that the view is actually taken that the scheme is that 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 no approval is given for that pre-commencement condition. So, you know, there is that control in terms of, uh, you know, when the information is found, the officer might simply take take the view that you know something is of such fundamental importance, and therefore, um, you know, that condition, you know, is not actually discharged. Is that how it would actually work? Uh, you know, for, as I see it, there is a control, you know, by virtue of five. Um, yes, so th through the chair. Um, the condition is actually um, suggested by the Staffordshire County Council archaeologist. So any um, written scheme uh, or written detail that comes in as, as a result of that condition would have to go back to the, the county archaeologist and we would have to get their their views on um, whether it, whether it's acceptable or not. And um, you know, again, it, it does depend what's found, and it depends on the severity. But uh, they could, if if they suggested that the condition couldn't be um, discharged, then you can't discharge the condition. You can't build the property. So it, it is as simple as that, really. Um, so it's it's sort of another level after the after the approval. But mm. again, it would depend on what is found. Yeah, I think that I think that's the answer there, Councillor Maycock. Is it depends. On what you find so if you find if you find something mm. that's insignificant or deemed to be insignificant it won't it sounds like it won't hold anything up but if it's uh, if it's another Staffordshire hoard that might be different um, if there's another Staffordshire hoard under that site I'm off down there with a spade tonight um, so let's have a look um, does that answer you that answer it for now sorry I thought it was important to get that clarified at this stage um, Councillor Harper if I may just uh, ask, who would be conducting the archaeology? Sally. Um, it would have to be a specialist. Um, the the agent, the or the applicant and the agent would have to employ a specialist archaeologist to to provide that scheme, and that would then be assessed by the county archaeologist. So I'm rather right thinking they would have to um, employ someone. Yes, it would, ha yes, it would have to be a qualified archaeologist or somebody qualified in order to do to provide that report. 
I would want a wholly independent uh, archaeological survey conducting, um, not involving the, the applicant or anyone else, um, because I think it needs to be completely, um, well, independent is the word I was looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Right. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Councillor Pritchard, you indicated. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, going back in folklore and history, uh, I believe when uh, the precinct was built, it's rumoured that somebody found some wood that looked like, looked like it might come off a Viking longship and they poured the concrete over it quickly. So I'm going to the point uh, that uh, my colleague John has just, just raised. Who is monitoring the dig? Because if somebody just goes in and starts ex excavating, who will be looking and managing and recognising that actually, oh, it's potentially a burial site? Or, oh, look, there's a load of gold coins here. Um, who knows? Who knows? But there has to be... If, if, it's go if, if we're going to grant permission to build and there are potentially significant archaeological... Uh, items of interest and we just ignore it we're being extremely laxed and extremely sort of uh, I, I don't know laissez-faire with regards to our responsibilities if if there's going to be a, a building an excavation I think the very least we should do is ensure that there is an independent archaeological investigation of the site prior to any works going on. Okay, thank you Councillor Pritchard. Does anybody else want to add to the debate? Councillor Jay. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I think we've probably all said what we need to say. We've just got one final thing. It's easy. Not, none of us like change, right? So if something's been built on our doorstep, it, the, the natural reaction is to, to be against it. So it's easy for sometimes for us in here to sometimes think that if someone's objecting, then it's just because they don't want it on their doorstep, and we can sometimes trivialise it. But the, the point that the lady made about things like the light and the the, the wind and the, the, um, the ventilation, we, we shouldn't trivialise those trivialise those things. We should take those into account. Um, I built a property, and there was no one next to it. This is in our place abroad, and we came back, and someone in the plot next to us had built property, the closest you can imagine that they were allowed to build it. They built it. And it, it's basically, it sounds pathetic, but it's rechanneled the wind in a different direction. And any door on that side of the house or window slams shut, right? So we, we had a baby at the time. She's got woken up by the door slamming. We had to pay to put these like slow release things on the doors. It sounds trivial, right? But it's really annoying. And um, that's just one example. So you imagine if it's that and then it's light and it's other things. So we shouldn't trivialize um, things like that and just um, disregard them because genuinely they, they do happen and they do have an impact. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Anybody else want to say anything at this stage? Sorry, I can't. Sorry, I can't take. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Miss Ains. Sorry, at this point, I just. Um. I've listened to a lot that's been said 
um, and I'm going to have to think about the wording of this very carefully. Uh, and I wouldn't normally do this from the chair, but I feel it's appropriate. So I'm going to move that we refuse this application um, on the uh, impact on the heritage, heritage asset, which is the Spittle Chapel. Um, and I think uh, if you look at EN6, um, I think these proposals will affect uh, the heritage asset and the conservation area and the, the overall, I've got to get, I probably need some advice on the word in this, but the overall surroundings of the, uh, of the chapel. Um, so on that impact on the chapel and the heritage asset, I'm going to move that we refuse the application. And I'll look for someone to second if they wish. Blimey. I actually don't know whose hand went up first there, so I'm going to take <laughs> I'm going to take the one that I saw first, which was Councillor Harper. Councillor Harper, do you want to, are you wanting to speak or do you want a second? Um, I, I do want a second. If I could just have a, a, like a closing comment, if I may. We, as a council, when we were elected in May, promised the people of Tamworth that we would look after their history. There you go look after their past. If we are to keep our c promise to the people of Tamworth, this is where it's at. These are the decisions that we have to make. Sometimes difficult, but sometimes you have to stand up and be counted. And I think, well, I, I passionately think that to save this precious piece of Tamworth, we desperately need to refuse this Inacceptable, unacceptable uh, application. Thank you, Councillor. I hope Harper. you agree. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Okay, so we've got a proposal. We've got a seconder. We've got a seconder. Okay. So okay. we move to a vote. Yeah, we move to the vote. We move to the vote. Yeah, well just, just for clarification, Chair, uh, it's contrary to policy EN6. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So all in, the, all in, all those in favour of refusing the application in front of us, please show your hands. Candidates, Chair. Thank you. All those against? Two. Any abstentions? One. That should make 11. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. Okay, so that application has been refused on the grounds of uh, it going against the policy, yeah, policy EN6. EN yeah, impact on the heritage SS. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, we'll move to the next application on the agenda this evening. That's the uh, co-op, uh, the co-op site. Okay, so it's application number 0069 2020. It's the uh, the previous. It was previously the co-op site on Brent in Wilnicote. Uh, Sally, can I ask you to introduce this application, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'll just run through a couple of couple of points on the actual report. Um, the first paragraph, um, the the description has been has been repeated twice, so we need to just delete the first paragraph. Um, apologies for that. Um, and then there are some required changes to some of the conditions, but I'll, I'll come on to those separately at the end. It might be easier to do that. Uh, just to explain, the um, the application was, was brought to committee in December last year, December 2020, and it was approved subject to a Section 106 agreement for a framework travel plan uh, that was necessary to uptake for, for the uptake of more sustainable modes of transport along with the framework travel plan monitor monitoring fee of uh, £12,000 regarding highway works. So that, that actual um, decision still, uh, sorry, that, that recommendation still stands, it remains as before, but what has happened 
since that since that uh, committee decision the section 106 hasn't yet been signed and and we understand that the um, the developers have secured a new tenant on the site so so the application is coming back to you and the report that, that is in front of you is is the previous report so all the issues that were raised last time are all still included on the report so it is a little bit confusing I'm afraid um, so what I'll try and do is just just identify what the changes are now um, so amendments have, s have been made because the as I say the developers have secured a new tenant um, and the proposed amendments to the scheme are, are mainly to the sa southern end of the site the, the slide that you've got there is the existing existing co-op building with all the car parking it's um, relatively overgrown actually at the moment um, if we go to the the next slide yeah that's that's the aerial again that was taken some time ago I, I'd imagine while the uh, while the building was still in operation um, so so this scheme was the scheme that was approved last last December as I say subject to the, the 106 so <coughs> Excuse me. So we're looking at the area with the with the eight units at that side. There's a gym and seven other industrial units. So so basically, it's that portion of the of the uh, development that is now changing. If we go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So that's those units are, are going to be replaced or proposed to be replaced by one single building for a builder's merchant, Travis Perkins. It is. Um, and, and obviously moved away from the boundary within the site and it, essentially you can see some sort of circulation around the, the uh, side of the site and that's that's um, all part of the proposed builders merchant um, if you go to the next slide actually that's probably yeah that, that just helps you with with the names which you, you're probably all fairly familiar with um, Lidl and, and B&M the two retail premises and then um, I think previously there was Costa, but we've now got Starbucks and then two small retail units, uh, Subway and Greg's at the moment, and uh, obviously KFC at the top, as you can see in nicely, nice big letters. Um, so the KFC and the Starbucks are both drive-through units, and then um, you can see Travis Perkins is, is this, this other new um, or replacement of, of a building. Um, so... <laughs> What what we really need to to advise is that we've we've consulted all the same consultees that we we did on the the previous application, and we've got no significant issues or objections raised through this reconsultation process. Um, again, it's all detailed in the report. Um, there has been, as we understand, um, a, a retail use within the existing co-op building since about July uh, new life new life charity which is um, which is um, a clothing retailer a second-hand clothing retailer um, and then the storage in in the remainder or, or part of the building <coughs> excuse me um, that's intended to, to carry on until probably the end of the year um, until until permission is uh, finally granted I would imagine um, and in, in terms of that scheme, there's been no material changes in planning policy since since the time that this was, was previously looked at. Planning policy guidance or the MPPF, um, since the application has been considered by the committee, um, and there's no new development proposals or planning applications that have any material bearing on, on our consideration or your consideration now. Um, the proposals have been reassessed by the highway county highways officers and and other consultees and it's been found to be acceptable so um, the report details basically what the changes are the emission of those units and the and the gym um, some changes to the conditions in terms of of times of opening um, but overall the total floor area is actually less than than was previously um, shown on the scheme. So it, the previous total was 10,982 square metres and this this new proposal totals 7,787 square metres so it, it has come down considerably. As regards um, car parking 
accordingly with the with these units the overall there is a reduction overall and the overall um, amount is now 307 car parking spaces previously it was 352 and that that is basically due to the um, the Travis Perkins or the builders merchants um, element not requiring as much car parking as as previous uses or the, the previous proposed uses um, the highways officer is basically he's saying that taking into account the replacement of the the eight or the seven units and the uh, the gym in the trade terrace with a single end user and the cycle provision within the site and then proposed widening of the existing southern footway onto Brent um, he's comfortable with a proposed level of on-site car parking provision and has no objections following the the conditions that uh, have, have been listed in the report and the the legal agreement which was already mentioned um, so, so that was the, the key change really in terms of um, of highways I don't think there's any need to go go into the detail of, of all the, the rest of the report as I say it was previously considered acceptable and, and debated at length I think um, back in December last year um, so the, the only other thing to mention is the conditions um, condition two we'll, we would have to change in relation to the the new drawings that are, that are related to this this development um, the the new elevations for instance and the new layout plans so that's condition two just need some updating condition three refers to um, units one to seven not occupying more than 25 percent of the floor space for retail purposes well again that's that's now not relevant because that's not because um, we're not talking about the the seven units um, condition eight again refers to units one to eight so that needs needs changing and condition 23 also refers to uh, units one to eight again that needs needs changing and relating to the current scheme condition 26 has some drawing numbers that need amending as well and then condition 28 refers to the gym obviously the gym is now not being uh, included so so that one needs to be altered as well in relation to the existing unit so um, all in all the the scheme is relatively similar to that which you approved last year um, and subject to those same conditions and the same legal agreement for payment towards the the uh, tr framework travel plan um, it's recommended for approval again chat thank you thank you sally um yeah it, it is worth pointing out this did come to committee last december for those of you who weren't on the committee then um and it was it was approved at that committee meeting um but it now obviously is a revised layout um which is what we probably should be primarily concerned with at the moment now we do have a speaker on this application councillor tina clements uh can i ask you to come forward please take a seat make yourself comfortable no um i'll trust you know how the microphone works and when you start speaking your three minutes will start thank you chair and i'll uh, talk really quick as you've uh, been introduced but for the people at the back councillor tina clements i've been the wilnicott councillor for 11 years and i was a former resident of wilnicott for nearly 30 years um this application is overall pleasing and very long overdue. Um, it is frustrating to see another fast food restaurant. Uh, it's also frustrating to see another conglomerate coffee drive through, um, but at least it's not another Costa, so I'm happy. Um, I also don't understand that we don't dictate who comes here. These businesses have business plans that dictate where they go. Um, it would have been nice to see something independent and a little bit different, but we are where we are. Um, it's also pleasing to see that the gym aspect has now been taken away, uh, which means the independent gym employing family members will continue to thrive. And as we're all very much aware, this site has been the site of antisocial behaviour. Um, travellers have accessed it for a number of years now, causing a lot of damage. Um, what is disappointing on behalf of the residents that I represent is the fact that um, post office have decided that they no longer wish to be in Wilnicott 
even though this was promised at the first consultation meeting um, and at other meetings since. And this is a service that the residents feel is required and is needed, um, but the post office don't seem to think so. Um, I did have some questions that haven't been answered um, and I did ask for those before this evening, so I'll just go through them quickly. Um, the times of Travis Perkins changing to 6.30, that's before the 7am threshold. Um, and although it's not close to residential buildings, it may have an impact. Um, there's no mention, and Simon Goodall will like this one, there's no mention of EV charging points. Um, I've got an electric vehicle, so am I not meant to go or am I not meant to charge? Um, there's nothing mentioned in the highways report. Sill monies for double yellow lines, I'd like these to be extended and to prevent overnight parking for HGVs and the rubbish that they leave overnight. Um, sponsorship of extra bins to cope with the fast food rubbish that will be left lying around when they leave it where they are parked or where they're standing. And I still have concerns around the traffic approach to the Ninian Way, Marlborough Way, Watling Street, Ireland. Island. If you try to get off that industrial estate at 5, 5.30, it is a traffic jam in itself, but highways don't seem to think that that's going to have an impact at all. Um, so overall, it's a good application. Um, but I would like some time frames of when spades are going to go in the ground. 30 seconds, Councillor Clements. So that the residents are not wa waiting another three or four years before anything happens. This has been going on since December 2018. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Clements. OK. As with the previous application, we'll move to questions and points of clarification before we go to debate. Does anybody have any questions, please? Councillor Goodall's thinking about it and his hand's gone up. Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. Um, am I correct in saying um, the existing Travis Perkins is just across the road from the um, Ninian Way at the moment and so it's, it's not a... From a traffic point of view, there is um, going to be a similar non-impact I guess. I'm pretty sure you're correct in saying that Travis Perkins is opposite um, Wicks on the other side of the estate. I'm getting lots of nods there so yes is the answer to that question. Um, I'll ask a question. I think, I'm sure it's on the plan. We have EV ch charging points on the site don't we? Uh, yes chair there's I think there's ten, ten oh, eight, eight. EV charging points on the site. They are on the site plan. I don't know. If the They're probably quite small, small and it's they, difficult they, to they see them, but they, yeah, yeah, they are there. If you zoom in, you can see them. Yeah, yeah there are okay. eight altogether. <coughs> Thank me. you. Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, Chair. With the change of use, uh, the removal of the small units, the uh, provision of a builder's yard and builder's outlet. What controls are going to be in place uh, with regards to builders packaging, rubbish, etc. that very often we see blowing around all over the place? Thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Sally? Uh, I'm just seeing if there's any particular, sorry, if there's any particular condition in, in that respect. Um, we would be consulting with the, with the waste um, services anyway and, and, that, and there would be provision, probably private provision for waste collection. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so private provision for waste collection. Councillor Pritchard. Uh, I'm not talking about waste collection, I'm, I'm talking about control on the site. As it's been developed? No, when it, well as it's been developed but also when it's in use because very often you see pl paper and plastic blowing around the industrial estates uh, like Brushwood did through Dodge. Thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Sally? Um, well, th there's no condition that particularly requires um, waste collection or, or keeping, the, keeping the site tidy. I mean, it would be down to the individual developer to, to do that, um, as I'd imagine that they do at the moment. They, they keep their, their own site tidy, um, but there's, n there's no particular control on that. Thank you, Sally. Councillor Pritchard? Uh, one other question. Uh, I remember when this was passed originally, my colleague, Councillor uh, Brindley, raised the point of DDA. Uh, and do we have DDA access all the way through the site? Sally? 
Yes, um, I believe so. Yeah, it's, it's again, it's been it's been uh, scrutinised by the highway authority, and they they've looked at uh, all the requirements that that are that are needed, and yeah, they've accepted that. Thank you. So, okay, Councillor Pritchard, I've got that, all that covered for you. Yeah. Any other questions? I see no others. So we'll move to debate. Does anybody want to start us off? Blimey. I'll go ladies first. Councillor Greatrix. I just want to point out a mistake on the report. It said that it was first brought before the committee uh, December 2021. I don't think so. Uh, it's no. on page 22. Yeah, you're right. It does say December yeah. 2021. We're not time travellers, so yes, it was December 2020. Thank you. Apologies, Councillor Jay. Jay. Yeah, I just think um, this is a nice, easy one after the first one. Uh, it's a site that needs to be developed. It's long overdue, as Councillor Clement said. Um, you know, we can't get hung up on the, the shops that are going there, whether we like them or not, because that's not down to us, but... It needs to be developed. It's good for that side of the town. Gives options, jobs for that side of the town. So I think we should just uh, approve it. Are you actually moving the application, Councillor Jay? <laughs> yeah, I can move it. Yeah. Thank you. Just so I'm clear. Does anybody else want to contribute, Councillor Goodall? Thanks, Jack. I'm I'm happy to second if uh, if nobody else has got any further comments. Thank you, Councillor Goodall. Yeah, we've got a mover and a seconder, so we're going to move to the vote, please, on the application. All those in favour of approval, please. It's been a long day, I know, party. <laughs> and those, all those against, please. We've got one against. One against. And that should make 11. Yeah, that's 11. Excellent. Thank so that, that application has been approved. Uh, thank you all. And uh, with that, I'll call the meeting closed at 7.20.